Yes. Yes. Let's do it. Let's go. Woohoo! Welcome to episode. It doesn't matter. Live in the moment. Look at your device. Not my problem, right? I do a podcast either way. Welcome to Who Gives a Fuck? Somewhere on the sea. La, da, da. So it seems. Welcome back to the Luke Kidgel Hour. We're doing it. I'm in Cairns over the other side of the country. Pretty sure I was in Perth last week. I don't remember. Life, life's a bit like that now. Um, see, some people are like, life's a movie, bro. My life's a movie. My life is dementia. Um, I don't remember where I was yesterday. Oh, no, I was in Cairns. Yeah, no, I do. It was a good show. I did a show yesterday. But that's where it's got to. Every day is, is the same but, like, different. It's fucking... I can't explain it. But I'm in Cairns. It's good weather. And, yeah, the show last night was sick. I got some tales to tell. Don't worry. I got some tales. Um, shout out to those in lockdown right now again. I do feel bad for you, as I was saying last week. It's not, it's not funny anymore. Like, it never really was, but it was a bit like, oh, suck shit. There was a bit of that going around between states. There was like, oh, New South Wales, like, suck shit, Melbourne, you bloody dirty coffee dogs. You know, and now, obviously, they're taking the brunt of it. But 633 cases in a day, ain't no one smirking at that. That's fucked. That Fix it. Like, th- that's going to go to a Christmas. Think about that. Santa Claus is, ha- is going to have to do two weeks quarantine just to hit the New South Wales market. Otherwise, no one's getting shit for Christmas this year. It's going to be brutal. People in Darwin are going to get prezzies. Perth, sure. Maybe Queensland. They're looking pretty good at the moment. But man, Melbourne and Sydney. Man, you, you <laughs> your Christmas trees may be empty unless Santa yeah, does the hotel quarantine. If I was him, wouldn't we? Couldn't we fuck? Because you got to do the rest of the world too. Or maybe he gets like an exemption because he's like an essential worker on Christmas. Who knows? I'm not sure how it works. But uh, either way, I hope lockdown's faring you well. If you are in it, hang in there. I know there's a lot of people going through a shit time at the moment. But uh, look, if I put one smirk on your face today, done a good job. All right, <clears throat> come. All right, that might have got 3% of you. The other 97%, I'll work harder. Uh, so last night's show was sick. It was good. People in Cairns came out. Uh, I was shocked at how many people came. Like, I don't know why. I still, I'm still at that point where I'm like, I, I'm, I always am surprised <laughs> at how many people show up to my shows. I was like, well, there's people here. This is fucked. Like, what are they all doing? <laughs> it was one of the best shows of the tour, actually. It was so weird. So it was at this backpacker bar in Cairns called The Jack, right? And it's backs on to so the stage. I don't know if you saw my Instagram story, but if you didn't, the stage backed on to literally a backpackers next door. So there's people on their balcony watching my show, but like from behind me. I got heckled by some backpackers who were drunk and high, and they weren't even in the venue. That's a first. I've only ever really got heckled by people at the show in my entire career. It was a definitely a foreign experience to have some guy just sitting on his balcony dribbling over it, just going, oh, buddy, oh, man. Um, I'll have to upload the clip. It was so funny. This guy's like, why don't you ask me what you do? Is, what I do is a job, mate. Huh? And I was like, what? And he's like, ask me what I do as a job. And I was like, bro, I already know the answer. You don't have one, right? You're at a backpackers in cans, dribbling off a balcony, and all I can smell is weed. It was, I love doing shows like that. Because that's why comedy is like the best thing in the world. Because no matter how successful you get, the last show I did before that was a thousand people at one of the most prestigious venues in Australia, the Regal Theatre in Perth, a beautiful theatre, like not lovely backstage, comfy seats, like it's very grand, there's ushers, it's a, it's a whole thing. Then the next show, the very next show I do is at a backpacker's pub where they go, oh, here's your green room and there's just some British bloke in the kitchen cooking his meal. It's not a green room. It was just 
uh, some someone else's kitchen. I just felt bad. There were people trying to eat their dinner. I'm out there before the show. They're like, oh, is it all right if I sit here? I'm like, yeah, dude, you do you. You have to have dinner. They're like, oh, what what are you doing here? Like, are you staying at the backpackers? And I was like, no, this is this is uh the green room. And then the guy was like, oh, is that what says VIP? I was wondering who the very important person was. <laughs> and I was like, is it you? And I was like, uh, apparently. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it's good. It's nothing, there's nothing more humbling, you know, just as you think things are starting to pop off, you're like, all right, getting a few bloody followers on the talk, things are looking up, uh, nothing like comedy to send you plummeting back down to earth. Like, oh, you think you're top shit, do you? Cool, man. Get heckled by guys who can't even see the show, who are behind you drinking for $30 a night at a backpacker's then see how good you are at Comedy Champ. So it's great. It's good to be back, Regional Queensland. Honestly, we're so excited about these shows. Regional Queensland is probably my favorite place to do shows because you never know what you're going to get. It's a mixed bag. You know, it's one of those places where like you rock up and the bouncer's always like, yeah, mate, if you have any trouble tonight, I'm your guy. All right, we get a few characters in. We get a few bloody, you know, knockabout characters walking through this joint. So anyone gives you trouble, mate, Oh, I've got you. And in no no city does the bouncer ever, like, warn you. They're always like, yeah, man, I'll be here, but, like, it's all good. Not, only in regional Queensland are they like, eh, fucking caved someone's head in last night. But he's all right. He's all right. He's, I mean, he's still in a coma, but nah, he reckon he'll be all good in six to nine months. So his missus will, be, will, will probably have the baby by then, but ah, he'll be all right. Happens, you know. That's Bundaberg. So I'm keen. Can't wait to be back. It's good uh, having that reassurance from some huge bloke you've never met before you go on stage that he's got you, uh, which is exactly what happened last night. Absolute legend. Uh, it was it was good, man. Uh, nothing else really happened. It's a few. Oh man, a, re- a real hot dad and a hot mum. You know, just you know when hot people. It's weird when you see hot people grown up. Because, like, and they were with their daughter, and I felt bad for the daughter because I was like, what's it like having hot parents? You know, it was just, you know, when some people, like, you just can't avoid bringing it up. You're like, oh, you guys are, are specimens. Like, they were probably, like, 45, 50. I don't really, it was actually hard to tell how old they are because they were just so good looking. Like, I, at first, I thought the dad was there with his two daughters. That's how, hot, like, hot his wife was, Right. So I was like, I don't know, maybe that he's there with his like, you know, twenty five year old daughter or something, and it's just like a, a catch up. Not at all. It was his wife, and I was good on her. I want whatever she's taken, you know, whether it's, you know, vitamins or something a little more of the narcotic use. I mean, I I'm not a big big into drugs, but if it makes you look that good when you're forty five, maybe I should get on it. I don't know what she was on, but maybe she was on some kind of just steroid that anti aging. Who knows? But these, these people were just good looking. You know, some people, like, when you go to some of these towns, like, particularly Cairns, it's like a nice, relaxed place. No one's in a rush. Like, you drive around the city, and there's 30 kilometer an hour areas when driving. Some bits you drive through the city, 20 kilometer an hour speed limit. Now, that's slow as fuck. That's car park level pace. You're pretty much crawling. I reckon I could actually run faster than that. Like, it, that's not going quick but no one cares because no one's in a rush like in melbourne people would just be like flying through there copping the fines going time is money bro just step on it not around here no one's in a rush like you drive around and everyone's just kind of relaxed and that's how you probably look incredible when you're 50 you've just never ever had a stress in your life because you're like well mate why would i i live in a lovely place where the weather's usually pretty good apart from the wet season and I breathe in fresh air from the mountains every day. Why would I have a wrinkle? So I'm very jealous of people here. It's it's a it's a good place, you know. I like regional Queensland, guys. Some of it's rough, but other parts good. I did a little cheeky spot at a Laughing Heart Comedy. That was a bit fun. Um, so yeah. Oh, we we got delayed on the way here. I had the buddy shittest commute. So I was supposed to leave Cairns, like sorry Perth, on Friday, but. Our flight got cancelled. We were supposed to get this midnight flight, like a red-eye flight, midnight to 6 a.m., Perth to Cairns, the other side of the country. I was like, well, it's going to be fucked. That's right. But turns out, who would have thought, no one is flying from Perth to Cairns. So they cancelled the flight. Then we had to get this stopover flight 
from Perth to Brisbane and then Brisbane to Cairns. We fly from Perth to Brisbane, get to the airport. I look it up at this board of all the flights and I was like, that's weird. Our connecting flight to Cairns is not on the list. I was like, huh, maybe it's a secret. <laughs> I was like, maybe it's like an off the grid flight. You know, maybe we're getting some like real private service where it's maybe it's a private plane. Who knows? But I was like, okay, that that's not a good sign when your flight's not on the board that you're supposed to catch in an hour. So we walk up to the thing and I was like, hey, we're supposed to get, be getting a connecting flight to Cairns. And they were like, yeah, that left an hour ago. And I was like, oh, great. And our flight wasn't delayed the first one. They were just like, yeah, I think I think Qantas forgot to update their website. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Cool. Well, that's great. Thank you for letting us book a flight that we could never catch because we were in the air when it took off. No, I really appreciate it. Um, so then we had to. they put us up in a hotel at the airport. I've never done that before. I've never stayed at one of those airport hotels. Uh, guys, if you want to know what it's like, imagine a hotel... But it's right next to the airport. Very similar. Actually, nothing of note happened that night. We got a $30 meal allowance. I had a chicken parmigiana in bed and uh, was a bit sad because I was sick of traveling. I'd spent a whole day traveling and I got halfway there. Frustrating. And then we had to wake up at 4.30 a.m. the next day. So already I've had five hours sleep the night before because we went out uh, to a friend's birthday thing in uh, Perth, right? And... You know, and, and, and I am who I, I know who I am, right? I'm the type of guy that if I have to wake up at 8 a.m. the next morning to get a flight and someone at a party or an event, it gets to 12 and they go, oh, you've got to be up in eight hours. You should probably head off. You don't tell me how to live my life, okay? I will leave at 2 a.m. and then go to a kebab shop like the piece of garbage that I am. Do not intervene. These, this is, I'm a big boy, all right, with big regrets in the morning. And so I'm, I'm already coasting off five hours sleep. I can't sleep on planes straight up. I don't know how people do it. I will see people all the time just like conked out in a chair. I've never been able to sleep in a chair. If you're a psychopath, if you can sit upright like in a rigid straight back chair and just like this and just sleep and like have like a good three hours on a four hour flight, you're a maniac. I don't know how people do that. Right, so I can't. I I couldn't even sleep in the middle of the night from like LAX to Melbourne. Could not get a wink of sleep. Fourteen hour flight. Just stayed there awake, going, "Well, fuck it. I'm gonna watch Guardians of the Galaxy one and then Guardians of the Galaxy two. What a soundtrack! Great films. Chris Pratt is a hunk. That's not the point. The point is, I was wide awake the whole time." So I get to Brisbane, I'm already fucked, and they go, no connecting flight. I'm like, great, cool, that's fine. So we go up to the hotel room. Then I'm, I don't know if you guys do this, but I'm a psychopath. So if I know that I have to be awake in like, say, it was like got to 11 p.m. and I had my alarm set for 4.30 a.m. So if I know I have to be up in like five and a half hours, I just lay there. And I just can't sleep. And for some reason, I'm such a... I was just acting like I was so jet-lagged. I was like, oh, guys, the time difference. You know, I've been in Perth. I just can't handle... It's two hours, right? They're two hours behind. So I've been going to bed late at Perth time. So I've been going to bed like 1, 1 2 a.m. Perth time because my sleep schedule's fucked. And which means I've been going to bed at like 3 to, to 4 a.m., you know, uh, Melbourne or, you know, East Coast time. So it gets to 11 p.m. I'm not tired. I'm like, I usually don't go to bed for another four hours. So I'm sitting there wide awake. I'm restless. And then it gets to like 2.30 a.m. I have to be up in two hours. I think I eventually got to sleep. I got two hours sleep after I got five hours sleep. So the next day, I'm running on fumes. We get to Cairns or the first flight in. We get here at like 8.30 a.m. I am like, dude, the tank's low. I'm chugging along down the freeway. You know when your car starts spluttering? You're like, oh, fuck. Oh, God. That was me the whole day. I had to have a nap, right? And now i become a nap guy. I had a nap yesterday before the show as well. I need to fix that. You don't want to be nap guy. Oh, guys, I'm just going to take a nap. How old are you? Four? Like, if you are taking naps during the day and you, like, don't have a chronic illness or whatever, I don't know what to tell you. Fix it, Right? I mean, I, and I'm currently doing that. I need to fix it. So 
Anyway, I'm good now, but it was a rough weekend. I, it just knocked me around. <laughs> it's so, you can't call jet lag. You can only claim jet lag if you're like, I had the opposite sleep schedule. I'm two hours behind and I'm just like, man, it really knocked me around for a week. Don't know how I did it. But um, yeah, anyway, good to be back. So this show, right? Uh, obviously, we do the um, we do the s- segment ranking sound text of the two. Oh, by the way, I also want to discuss the the Bachelor and the rumors that it may be cancelled. That is coming up. Uh, fair warning. But just before we do that, we have a segment on this podcast where over the tour we rank sound text of the tour. So the guys that operate the sound and lighting in every show, usually Reese is there. Uh, to give his judgments, because I try and remain impartial. Because hey, I don't want to. I don't want no beef. You know, I, I I'm going to return to some of these venues in the future. I can't be on podcasts talking smack. But Reese isn't here, and I respect the segment too much not to participate. So it's that time again. Let's do it. Oh, there's no opener for some reason. I thought there was an opener. I'll do it a cappella. Ranking sound text. Of the two up. Yeah. There we go. That's the opener. Last night, Cairns rocked up. It was very evident from the get-go that this venue had never hosted a comedy show. And I knew that because they said, yeah, I don't think we've ever hosted a comedy show. So I was like, okay, that's a pretty telltale sign that they are going to be confused. It got to the point where I had to explain to the dude I was like, yeah. So he goes, do you want the do you want the stage lights on during the show? And I was like, what? He's like, you know, like the the lights that are so people can see you. Do, they'll be on during the show. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we'll have the lights on during the show. He goes, yeah, great, no good. I just wanted to check. <laughs> and I was like, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> and then I go, oh, can we get like the house lights off? You know, oh, like not on the. So, sorry, when people walk in, but then as soon as the the show starts, you turn the lights in the crowd off. So then the lights are just on me because it's my time. You know, I'm the center of attention. And also people like being in the dark. No one likes being in a well-lit comedy room. You know, you can't laugh at me, tell a Hitler joke uh, in the light, you know, in the, in the daytime. But you have to, you know, it's kind of like you can go piss in the dark in a park, but during the day, highly inappropriate. It's just one of those things. Comedy just works better if you're in the dark for some reason. So I'm like, yeah, I have to explain pretty much everything. Then I go, oh, I usually have like a Spotify playlist um, just to chuck on before the show, just to pre-show tracks. And he goes, oh, we're not licensed to play that. We have our nightlife playlist that we have to play. And I was like, right, okay, no, that's cool. I was like, you know what, man? The tunes have been cranking. That's cool. So I go, oh, can I at least play my, my walkout song? So I explain to him, I usually walk out to Fat Bottom Girls uh, by Queen. Why? Because it's the ultimate pump-up song. It got robbed in the competition that I did on this podcast a couple of years back, or maybe it was a year ago, who knows. Um, I think it got beaten out by, oh, like, either Tiger or... I don't know. What can, what won? Does anyone remember what song won? I cannot even remember. But uh, comment below if you remember what song won the competition. But Fat Bottom Girls got absolutely robbed. Oh, no, Holding Out for a Hero run won, I think. The Shrek 2 version, which is... I feel like people were just voting because they heard Shrek. Um, and I feel bad for Freddie Mercury because you just can't beat a lovable green ogre. And that's as simple as that. It, look, even the... I would say, you know, that most of the Shrek soundtrack would beat out the Beatles' greatest hits. You know, oh, Paul McCartney, you got knighted. Cool. But Smash Mouth, at the end of the day, most people would judge as a superior band. Big call, but... Let it be, Paul. Let it be. Boom. Got him. Got him with his own fucking lyric. I mean, it might have been John's lyric. Forget who wrote that one. But the point is, they got owned. All right? Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, hey, Paul McCartney, get a ticket to ride these nuts, bro. Yeah? Awesome. I'm trying to think of another slam. Um, Hey, uh. Uh, hey, uh, hey, Paul, get back to sucking on these nuts, bro. Yes. Yes. Hey, Paul, you know what's not getting better? 
your music over time. You peaked in the 60s, mate. Yes. I don't know why I'm slamming one of my favorite bands of all time. That's that's the kind of person I am. I'll just straight up slam a band that everyone loves and I love and listen to frequently. Um, hey, hey, uh, John, you, you said, here comes the sun. Um, here comes me on your mum. Ah, fucking got him, dude. You would not want to be a beetle right now. All right? You would not want to be a beetle right now. Um, uh, one more. Hey, John, this is just one from me to you. Okay, this is going to get him. This is the, this is the final one. The final one, I promise. The final beetle slam. Hey, John, Paul, Ringo, and George. I don't want to hold your hands. Got him. Mic drop. Owned. What was I talking about? <laughs> bit of, went on a bit of a detour there. Oh, yeah. So I walk out to Fat Bottom Girls, right? <laughs> then uh, I'm explaining to the guy. Like, he goes, oh, great choice. Queen. And I go, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, now you've got to understand. When someone suggests this, I'm th- I go in thinking this is a joke. So the guy goes, oh, you're walking out to Queen. He goes, do you want to do the thing where uh, like Freddie Mercury does where you pull the mic uh, you pull half the mic stand out and kind of like sing along to it. Now, when someone suggests that before like a comedy show and, you know, they're trying to make banter and stuff, you have to assume that's a joke. Because like, again, at this point, I th- I am under the understanding that the people at the venue know that it's like a stand-up comedy show because I've been booked there. They've been promoting it for weeks. I'm under the impression that the sound tech has been told, this guy's a comedian. He's just going to talk for an hour. That was not the case at all. I then start taking what he said as a joke. So I go, oh, yeah, dude, I'm definitely, yeah. You know what? I'm probably going to, I go, oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna pull the mic out. I'm going to like do Freddy at Live Aid. I'm like, I'm probably going to do the just three minutes of lip syncing at the start of the show to Fat Bottom Girls. And then me and Sammy, the opener, we start kind of riffing on this shit bit, right? You know, and Sammy's like, mate, you should bloody do 10 minutes. And I was like, yeah. Chuck on Bohemian Rhapsody. Fuck it. Let's do the whole show just lip syncing Queen for an hour. Again, I still think we're all on the same page going, well, there's no way we'd ever do that because that's ridiculous. The sound guy just looks at me and goes, okay, great. So what are you going to do is you're going to unscrew the thing here, right? So when it comes out and he starts then explaining, and I go, oh, no, no, no. Um, I was joking. Um, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tell jokes. And he goes, Oh. oh, okay, cool. So no Freddie Mercury lip syncing. And I go, no, 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 no. And he goes, oh, okay, great. And he was really confused. And then Meg goes after the show. She goes, hey, why did the sound tech come up to me and say that you were going to lip sync Freddie Mercury for three minutes at the start of the show? And I go, oh, I was joking. And he goes, yeah, he came up to me and was like, Hey, so just to be clear, um, he's going to come out and lip sync Fat Bottom Girls for three and a half minutes. And Meg goes, no, 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 he he just walks out to that song and then he'll start talking and he'll just do do the show. And he's like, oh, he told me he was going to, and Meg was like, I think he was, he must have been joking. And the guy was like, oh, yeah, right. No, 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 fair enough. Great. And that got me thinking. I was like. Fuck, well, firstly, what did they think the show was going to be? Like, I, I told him, yeah, I might just lip sync different Queen songs for an hour. And he was like, in his brain, he was like, yeah. Nah, this guy running away from cops and explosions on his poster. Definitely a Queen lip syncing act. Now, fair warning, I don't have a mustache or a singlet or an overbite. I'm not. Like I wouldn't, I would never get hired as a Freddie Mercury um, doppelganger at a at a party, like a lookalike. You know, maybe the guy from You, Joe, or um, the guy from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Ed, someone forgot his name, but I look a bit like them. Maybe the guy from That Seventy Show, perhaps if that's a stretch. 
but definitely not Freddie Mercury. And then it got me thinking, I was like, man, so this guy clearly wasn't even that turned off the idea of watching that for an hour. Like at no point when I was like, I will probably do that for an hour. Like at no point was he like, why the fuck would you do that? So then I was like, wait, so say if I just like, I'm doing Townsville like tomorrow night, right? I was thinking like, what point of the show would people start leaving if I just was lip syncing Queen? So I come out, Fat Bottom Girls is blaring. It's like, oh, you're going to take me home tonight. I lip sync for like a minute. I reckon people, like I reckon the first 20 seconds, people will be like, oh, this is a bit funny. Luke's opening with a bit of a, a lip syncing bit. Bit, bit weird, but okay. Interesting start to the show. Then I get a minute into the song and I start doing the second verse. I think people will be like, Oh, is this is this a bit? Maybe it's part of the trip. Maybe it's building to a punchline. I get to the end of Fat Bottom Girls. It fades down. People probably go, great, all done. Now the joke's going to start. Imagine if the light's dimmed, spotlight comes down on me and it just goes, Is history a joke? Is this just fantasy? I'm recording a Lancelot No escape from reality At what point do people just fucking walk out? Like how much do you think at a show You would sit there for And watch me lip sync Queen? Because this sound tech thought I could probably do it for an hour Like would it be during the Galileos? You know, five minutes into Bohemian? Or would you wait until I'm doing some like lesser known songs by Queen like I am the invisible man dude dude you know or would you would you stick around for Radio Gaga imagine that just imagine that's your night out you go I'm going to see this comedian I've seen him on the internet it's going to be sick I've brought a friend along they don't know him but I've assured them that they'll have fun it gets 45 minutes into the show and I'm still like you're my best friend Ooh, you're making me live now honey I just want to know I'd love to know what point would you just fucking leave because <laughs> this guy thought I could do it for an hour and now I kind of want to see if I can. I'm doing two shows in Townsville. Perhaps one of them, I'll just lip sync Queen for as long as possible. Right? Maybe. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a show? I, You know what? I'm the type of audience member that if it got to the third song and I was like having a couple of beers, I'd just be like, I'm going to ride this out. I'm going to see how many fucking Queen songs this man knows. And at what point does it become just karaoke? where you invite people up and they're singing. That'd be a show, dude. You know what? That would be honestly so memorable. People would never come back, but they would never forget it. They'd be like, do you remember the time we went and saw that comedian at like a random pub in North Queensland and he just did Queen covers for an hour, but only lip syncing? They'd be like, yes, I'll never forget that. Maybe that could be my gimmick. You know, we were all it was all fun and games and we were kidding around about it, but... As soon as that guy took me seriously, I started to take my like myself seriously. I was like, oh my God, maybe I've got what it takes. Because in the sound check, I maybe gave him the wrong impression because he was playing Fat Bottom Girls. I'm just like being an idiot. I was just like singing along. I was like, oh, you're going to take me. Just like, you know, like when you joke sing because you're too insecure to sing in your real voice. That's what I do, right? Because if I like, it's not cool to earnestly sing. Like, oh, man, I don't even know if I could do it without without joking, without reverting back into, like, you know what I mean? Because it's easy to be like, coming from the lips of an angel, hearing those... It's easy to, like be, like, be funny to sing. But I don't know if I have the confidence to just sit now, right, even right now in front of all of you and just, like, try. I'm going to try to do it now. Just, like, honestly give it my best shot. <clears throat> This makes me so uncomfortable. Like, I, it, it, isn't that fucked up? I can get in front of like a thousand people and like not really have a problem with it. But like, if someone goes, sing for real, I'm like, no, I can't. I, I don't, that's out of my comfort zone. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I never made it up. No, I'm still joking. All right. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Coming from the lips of an angel, hearing those words in. <laughs> I can't do it. 
<laughs> Fuck. Maybe I need a better song. I reckon the ultimate karaoke song, uh, by the way, like the the easiest song to sing. I think I may have said this before, because it's a song where you don't need to be a good singer. Is f- uh, this heart attack by Faker? Like if you can, like I'm going away to be alone. I'm coming back with answers. Ah, ah, this heart attack. I'm gonna get it. Because even if you try and do an impression of the guy, it's a bit, you know what I mean? Like, like it's a, you don't have to be that good. And that's, look, that's no disrespect to Faker, but it, it is, it is a bit. I, I love their band, but um, I think, I think it's just, it's, a, it's an entry level karaoke song. That's all I'm saying, right? This heart attack. <laughs> Man, I would love to know if you guys can do that. Like, can you earnestly sing? Just in front of your friends. It's a super weird thing to do if you had never done singing before. Just like... Because you don't want to be that guy. The guy's like trying in the car. There's always that one mate. Like you'll be like all humming along in the car. Like, I do the same thing. I never, never, never would. Like the radio's on or whatever. And there's one guy in the back like... Just... Just, I don't know, like for real singing like the kid, the Roy. He's like, so there you go. Oh, can't make a wife out of a hoe. Oh, I found the word. Like, he's just, mm, like, get into it. And it's one of those ones where you, like, have to make eye contact with him if you're driving in the rear view mirror. And you're like, it's not the fucking voice. No one's spinning their chair around. Shut the fuck up. No one, I don't for real sing. All right. Unless you can sing. See, Meg, Meg is a good singer. She can actually sing because she did a lot of singing growing up. She's very talented, right? Even after two vocal surgeries, she wipes the floor with me in the car. She she goes, oh, I'm just joke singing and it sounds incredible. That's annoying. That's actually probably worse because she goes, no, I'm just I'm just playing around. Like, she'll, like, I don't know, what's the song? Like, she'll, she'll sing Paramore. Like, if we're in the car, she'll be like, whoa, what a man to bring, but I gotta wear a wedding now. And she'll be like, just, I mean, that was, that was butchering it, obviously. But she'll like, fucking, oh, like nail it. She'll hit every note, pitch perfect of like a Hayley Williams song. And I'll just sometimes stop and be like, you make me feel insecure to joke sing, you know? She's like, oh, no, I'm just like, I'm not trying. This isn't me trying. And I was like, well, that's even more annoying now. You know, that's, that's, that's the worst. Guys, anyway, this episode, this is the why we all came and listened to this listen to this episode right is because it's sponsored by manscaped that's why you're all here i know why you're all here you want to hear about manscaped.com.au it's the best place to get your um shaver and father's day is coming up so get your dad one all right it's a great gift all right if you don't know what to get your dad for father's day use code basic and get them the lawnmower 4.0 you know give give your mum a treat hell give your stepmom a treat if you you know Get get your dad laid. You know what I mean? Like maybe, maybe he's ask him how much action. Um, don't ask him, actually. Just go and assume that he could use a trim. Get him the gift. And you know what? It's one of those things that a lot of guys like won't go out and buy themselves the, the lawnmower 4.0. You should. It's the best ball shaver in the bloody market. It's great, right? But it's a great gift because a lot of guys just, we're lazy. We don't have the the initiative to be like, I should buy that for myself. I do that stuff. I'm like, oh, I should I should probably buy that. I bet I would like that. And then I'm like, it would take for someone to buy it for me. And then I'd be like, what was I? I was missing out the whole time. So Father's Day is coming up. Use code BASIC. Uh, and yeah, I support the brands that support the podcast, manscaped.com.au. It's the Lawnmower 4.0. It comes with the weed whacker, uh, the ball toner, the, the moisturizer. Just like ball deodorant, dude. You got stanky nuts, you know? Get, I mean, it's a bit weird, but gift your dad some good smelling neats for Father's Day. You know, you don't always have to go to Bunnings. He doesn't always want to be put to work. Give him something for him and maybe something that he wouldn't, or wouldn't otherwise get himself. I think it's a very good gift. So use code BASIC at manscaped.com.au. Absolute legends. We appreciate Manscaped for sponsoring the episode. Now... Was I finished talking about Cannes show? Probably. How does the guy rank on the tour? Look. <sighs> I think the, the Cannes sound tech did a great job for someone who did not know, who had not been told 
or was clearly unsure of what was about to take place on the stage. Now, should it be a job to figure out what's going on? Maybe. Sure, you could argue that. You could argue that perhaps he should have known that I was about to just talk about my cock for an hour, but he didn't, and that's fine. I would say... Look, and for that reason, he can't rank high. He's not, he's not top five of the tour, but I'm not going to put him up there with Brad, Darren, Max from Sydney. All right. I'm going to, again, sit him on that. Even uh, I would say Felix would have to be above him from Sydney. Serious operator Felix. He was great. Um, didn't crack a smile, but got the job done. I would say this guy maybe just below a Felix because you know what? He surprised me. Oh, turns out this was a bit of a curveball. He couldn't get fat bottom girls to work. I'm not sure what the problem was. They just didn't want to get it to work. So I made the bold choice. Meg was like, doors open in three minutes. And I was like, you know what, mate? You just fade up whatever's playing in the bar when I walk on. Surprise me. Bold. I knew that. It's a backpack of bar and cans. I'm like, where? I'm like, I'm, I'm asking for some pit bull. That's what that was. That was me going, ooh, Luke, you bit thirsty for some Flow Rider, are ya? Or some LMA- FAO. Not even that. Probably Red Foo solo stuff. That's what I was risking walking on stage two. Just Red Foo without the other guy. I knew what I was walking into, but I was like, you know what? You got to take risks. Not every show is going to be like the Regal. You need to be able to adapt under pressure. I walked on stage. <sighs> Look, I was pleasant. I wasn't. It was not as bad as I was thinking. I walked on stage to Katy Perry. I kissed a girl. Now, <laughs> not that on brand for for the comedy show, the kind of person that I am. Um, but at the same time, I've kissed girls. I liked it. I related to the song. Good on you, Katy. Um, I've I've never tasted her cherry lipstick before. I don't think. But I like I like kissing girls, you know. Meg's a great kisser, so I mean I, I like kissing girl, so that's good. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't as bad as it, it could have been. I know you want me. I know you want to. I know you. And then I would have been have to, you know, I would have had to acknowledge it and be like, aha, Mister Worldwide, am I right? Like, yeah. Um. But no, other than that, Ripper Show, can't wait. Uh, the dates, uh, I'll put them, oh, you've already heard them at the start of the podcast, but um, yeah, they're, they're um, selling out. I think, I'm just, sorry, got to get up because I know a few sold out. Makaya sold out already. Townsville sold out. This is crazy that regional shows are selling out. You guys are the best. Uh, Harvey Bay, there's still some tickets. Rockhampton is a fairly big room, so there will be tickets up until the night for sure. Um, that will not sell out that one because it's a fucking huge room, but uh, I would love to see you there. That's going to be a, still a big show. And then Bundaberg, that's when they got like 20 tickets left. Same with Harvey Bay. Toowoomba is moving really quick, and Sunshine Coast is like, bit, like less than 10 tickets left, um, and that sells out. We might add another one, but also maybe not because of COVID restrictions. Who knows? Uh, and same with the Gold Coast. We're not sure about those ones. So get in quick if you want to come because it's a bit up in the air with what's going to happen in regarding to COVID and uh, whatnot. And same with the Brisbane. Uh, so yeah, get get your tickets now just in case I have to close off ticket sales because of capacity restrictions. That's what I would say. All right, LukeKidger.com for that. Let's talk Bachelor. Let's do it. Let's talk Batch. I haven't watched the new season this year of the Australian Bachelor. I believe the Bachelor's name is Jimmy. Seems like a great guy. He's the pilot. I've seen it on the Instagrams. But me, uh, I guess similar to the rest of Australia, have not been viewing this season. Now, is there a direct correlation between bad ratings and me not doing videos on it? Absolutely. For sure. There's no there's no question about it that if you look just look at the data alone. Last season, I did videos on it, rated great. Now I'm not saying I'm solely responsible for that. Uh, you do with you do what you will with the data presented. Make up your own mind. I'm just giving you straight up facts here. I reviewed the season last year, rated phenomenally, people loved it. 
this year, I'm a busy man. Didn't touch it. Um, what's up? <laughs> Trying to be quiet. Yeah, that's what freaked me out. <laughs> Sammy, who's opening the show, has just walked into the kitchen then. I, t- I was like, so you could see out of the corner of my eye and you were like, He's like moving to the cupboard, opening it like a snail. <laughs> if you had just walked in and like gone to the cupboard, I wouldn't have noticed. You. <laughs> but I was like, I was like, is he moving in slow motion? <laughs> no, it's fine, mate. Do what you will, mate. I will be shocked. Let us know if you can hear Sammy Philly's water. I doubt you can. Um, anyway, so yeah, I reviewed it. Great ratings. Now this year, busy man on tour. Didn't get a chance to watch uh, The Bachelor. Decided to do Beauty and the Geek instead just because it's new, fresh. I was more excited to watch that. Um, and that went great. This year, didn't review The Bachelor. Dismal ratings. They're actually thinking about cancelling it. Sports better running odds on if it will be cancelled or not by the end of the year uh, or by the end of the season. And I'm pretty sure it's paying pretty high to be cancelled. A lot of people think it will be moved to online only. I do feel a bit bad for the Jimmy guy uh, who's the bachelor because it must be rough. You know, you're, he's probably gone into it going, all the prior seasons were successful. Either way, if I don't find the love of my life, I'm going to become an insta hunk. Girls are going to want me. Mate, at this rate, these contestants and this bloke, they're going to be lucky to get one spring carnival of getting invited into the Emirates, you know, area. The, the the fancy tent, the VIP area. Lucky. Maybe to the girls who made it top four. Maybe the girls who made it to home visits will probably cop an invite to Flemington this year. Otherwise, who the fuck are you? Don't know ya. We didn't watch it. It's actually rating so bad. Like there was, there's been calls. I mean, th- these are articles from like eight days ago now. And I don't think anything has actually come of it. Um, but there was definitely calls to just straight up cancel the whole thing. Um, I'm not sure what the ratings are. They never really say. But this last article was The Bachelor to be cancelled after record low ratings, source says. But Channel 10 insists there's still life in the franchise. I mean, people are just watching for Osh at this point. If you are watching, you're watching for the haircut. Osh is carrying that show. You, someone give that man a massage, all right? Because his shoulders must be sore. Um, record low ratings in the franchise's eight-year history. Look, and another thing, it's a bit rough. They've had to compete with the Olympics, which can't have been... That's kind of come a good time for the show. They're competing with the fact that no one's in the headspace to give a shit about some guy dating. Now, I have heard that the show's a little boring. I've heard... I've. You know, these are just, this is word of mouth at pubs. That That's my only source. It's just kind of people after shows going, oh, you've been watching The Bachelor? And I go, oh, no. And they go, yeah, don't. It sucks. Like, that's my only. And now I'm not one to judge. I like to, I like to view things for myself before I make up a point of view. So it, whether or not it's bad, who knows? People, I have, look, I have it on good authority that it's somehow boring. I don't know why, though. Maybe it's just the same as any other season. But there's maybe less bitchy girls. Who knows what's going on? But either way, th- I reckon the pansexual season that's coming up with Brooke, guys and girls all in a house fighting over one person, if that doesn't revive the franchise, I don't know what will. It's fucked. If they can't get people to watch that, then maybe we need to look elsewhere. Maybe we need to just give it a break for five years, then revive it. Because it is a format that works. It's a good television show. But even that's when you know it's going bad is when I'm not watching it. Like if I'm not watching The Bachelor, sorry to say, but no one's watching that show. I was one of the last few last year. I was one of the remaining folk that hung in there during, what was his name? Lockie. Lockie season. But yeah, not sure what's going on there. I think they'll probably just keep it on. Because you know why? <laughs> he, uh, t- two two reasons why it's going to stay on. Everyone's going, it's going to get cancelled. Here's why. One thing, it's still on. That article came out a week ago. It's still airing, I'm pretty sure. I think this show has so little hype around it, so little interest, that people at Channel 10 have actually forgotten it's airing 
and have just it's probably just not a priority. They're probably you know trying to get the project up, you know, get run those wild lead and carry numbers up. There is no way someone like that. That I don't know if you guys know how it works, but it, TV gets programmed weeks out, kind of like how the radio songs like are all programmed in advance for the whole month, right? Or a week. I, I don't know how far ahead it is, but. That's what used to happen when we worked at the radio show. I'm pretty sure TV is even longer because of advertising. Like, I know that, like, you can book in ads, like, a month out of when they'll air on television and whatnot. And because the TV schedules, like, in newspapers and stuff like that, they really plan it out. There is absolutely no way someone's just pulling that out. Because also, it's free-to-air TV. What the fuck are they going to replace it with? Just, like, reruns of Ready, Steady, Cook? At 7 p.m. in prime time. Did the Olymp... Oh, no, wait. Channel 10. What did Channel 10 even have? Like, Bold and the Beautiful. They got nothing else to put in that slot. Everyone's like, it's going to get cancelled. I'm like, for what? Don't pretend like they have anything else worth playing at that time slot. Like, they're struggling to get people to watch as it is. At least they've filmed it all. They've already paid for it. It's all been edited. Just run it. They've some bloke, some poor. Imagine the guy who edited it. He's just because I've always said re- editing reality TV must be the most boring job in the world, especially those ones kind of like Big Brother or Love Island where there's just cameras set up in each room. Having to make those people seem interesting is truly. I will never understand how they do it. One of the most phenomenal jobs in the world. I know what it's like having to polish a turd. Believe me. We've shot some videos in the past where I'm like, this is not our best work. But if we cut at the right times, add in the right graphics, keep it fast paced, blah, 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 it'll turn out all right in the edit. And I like to think that I'm mildly entertaining, at least try to be, at most times. Right? You know, you don't get that 100% hit rate. But overall, I'm a bit of a good laugh, I would say. At least a smirk. These people who go on Love Island, like, dude, I've met a lot of them. Thick as shit. Like talking to a fucking brick wall if the brick wall had Botox and a bad attitude. Okay? So imagine a brick wall that um has no texture to it. So just a wall, actually. Bit of a plaster vibe about these people. Lovely people, you know. It's like when I'm looking at this wall now behind me. Even this one behind me. Lovely wall, painted very well. However, don't want to have a conversation with it for more than a second. You know, hi, that's enough. That's me. That I've done. I feel like I know that wall now. I imagine watching these people. You got, uh, I'd imagine, eight to ten hours of footage every day to go through from like 20 different cameras, 20 different angles. And you get, you just get the footage dumped on your computer and they're like, make a show out of that and you're like fuck so you just have to watch these people laze around the pool there must be so many times where they just fart and you can hear it in their mic and they just keep going and this poor guy's like oh gotta cut out their fart edit clip clip all right lower the fart noise cool next brutal job and hats off if that's because so many people who land in that job it's not it's definitely no one's dream to work in Australian TV. Like most people go, you know those kids in like high school who do media and stuff, they're always like, I want to be a filmmaker. I'm going to be the next Steven Spielberg. I want to work in Hollywood cinemas. I'm going to be a movie like maker. And that's just my passion. I want to create and tell stories. And then like 10 years later, they're like, oh, here I am editing Love Island, Australia. Oh boy, what happened? I feel bad. It must be brutal. But, um, yeah, so I don't know if The Bachelor is going to get cancelled. Who knows? And the other reason is, yeah, like, they won't bother to pull it off. But, yeah, people just forget about it in the office. There's no way. There is just no way that any that's anyone's priority. And it's probably just slipped their mind. And they're not even probably realising it's still going to air. Um, because just, I mean, as someone who, I don't know if it's the same as TV industry. I imagine it's quite similar to radio where from the outside 
it seems like a really professional, slick business. You know, you see the billboard. But really, you get in the building and everyone's just scrambling behind the scenes. No one knows what the fuck is happening. It's just chaos and it's like any job. You realize that. You're like, oh, no one knows what they're doing at their job ever. Like, it, you know, most businesses you just go into, you're like, you think like, oh, this should be well run. Like a government organization. You get in there, you're like, oh, people don't know what the fuck is happening at all. You know, no one's priority. I mean, imagine TV is like that. I imagine it's one guy's job to cancel it and he's just gone, oh, like I took a long lunch break and then like I got an email and I got distracted and then I was working from home, so I had a shower, I fell asleep and then, oh yeah, I was supposed to catch a little bit, cancel The Bachelor. Oh, well, fuck it. It's going to air for another four weeks. My bad. That's probably what happened. Um, <laughs> it just just knowing what it's like in some of those industries. Guys, uh, that's almost the end of the pod, I think. I don't really have a lot else to update you all on. Definitely went on a lot of tangents today. Loose episode. Um, hope you enjoyed. Hope I uh, distracted you from the harsh reality of being in your home for an hour for some of you. Um, and yeah, for those who are allowed to go out, particularly in Queensland and stuff, I would love to see you at an upcoming show. Um, get out where you can and um, yeah, go, go get vaccinated as well because I'm, I'm sick of this shit. I think we all are. Um, I'm going to get vaccinated like the minute I get home. Um, I just can't really do it on the road because uh, I don't want to fuck me around. And like, you know, because a lot of people I know have just had a fever and stuff after getting it. And um, yeah, and I don't, I you know, I have a show like every second night. So I just can't be fucking dying on the ground. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's hope. I'm really hoping this all wraps up before December because I'm tired. Like, just to be perfectly candid with you all, that's how I feel. And yes, I haven't been sleeping probably, but also, I'm usually done touring by now. Like, I usually tour from, like, March to July, and I'm sick. I feel like I'm, I've been promoting stuff for too long. I feel like I'm always, like, on my Instagram stories, like, come to my show, blah, blah, And I, like, it's annoying. I understand that that doesn't apply to international people and stuff. And uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm getting like to the point where I'm like, all right, that's a lot. Um, I've just felt like I've been trying to make this work for ages and it's exhausting how much effort you have to go to to just make one single show happen. But what is cool is how much people appreciate it. Like everyone last night was like, dude, thank you so much for coming here. No one's come here in two years um, because of COVID. So everyone's like super thankful. And I feel like I am actually the only comedian in the country who has toured this year. Um, I can't even think of anyone else so it's a lot of effort but i'm getting to the point where i'm actually getting physically and mentally exhausted from it all especially trying to keep up with podcasts and stuff on the road sorry uh about the, all the late podcasts but yesterday it was either do either do my podcast and then be exhausted for the show or go have like a quick nap and then have a good show and i chose nap and show and it was worth it because i gotta you know i gotta be on it for those uh, people that came along every night so yeah anyway that's why the podcast is late and uh also guys maybe thank reese reese has been uh stuck at home during lockdown as well and he's still been keeping up with all this stuff and editing all the things that i send him and uh whatnot he's been working super hard for all you guys uh from home and nothing would happen without him so thank you very much to the old resource for doing this guys that's the end of the episode lukehidgel.com for tickets um i hope um, this is all over soon and I'll, I'll see you all or at least you'll hear me next week goodbye <laughs>